Hello and welcome to Game On, your audiovisual companion to the Golden Joystick Awards. Today we're going pocket sized, well not literally, as we run down the nominees for Portable Game of the Year, sponsored by Habo.com. My fellow Templars, a shadow follows our every step. Altair is getting things rolling first of all with Assassin's Creed Bloodlines. The PSP exclusive launched in November last year and takes place between Assassin's Creed 1 and 2. It's a notable addition to the nominee list as it features the same kind of free roaming sandbox gameplay that made the fully fledged console version so great. Not an easy feat for a handheld device. You are a credit to your creed. And sticking with the Templar theme, or rather sticking a knife in a Templar theme, it's Assassin's Creed 2 Discovery. Released for the Nintendo DS and the iPhone, the game takes place a full 15 years after the events of Assassin's Creed 2. In it, Ezio goes on a nice relaxing tour of Spain, putting his feet up and soaking in the sun. Nah, just kidding, it kills a lot of people. <laughs> It was hard to imagine Assassin's Creed's free-roaming gameplay translating to a 2D platformer, but it actually worked amazingly well, hence the nomination. We're leaving the Renaissance behind now and indulging in something a bit more modern. Warfare. Modern Warfare. Modern Warfare Mobilized was the handheld arm of Activision's massive gaming offensive last November. Launching at the exact same time as Modern Warfare 2, it brought a surprisingly slick first-person shooter to the Nintendo DS. The plot shows you trying to prevent a nuclear attack on Russia, which sounds a bit serious for a portable console, but nonetheless the game was very well received and could well conquer not only the enemy, but the Golden Joystick Award itself. Come on, this way! Sticking with Call of Duty now, things are taking a turn for the eerie with World at War Zombies. <laughs> Following the unprecedented success of the zombie add-on to World at War, Activision developed a spin-off version for the iPhone and iPod Touch, putting all the putrefaction of the undead party in the palm of your hand. First-person shooters are notoriously difficult to engineer for the iPhone, but by Jove they nailed it, making World at War Zombies an incredibly popular application. <laughs> Next up is Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars. Wow, this is a violent category so far. You'd think people on the bus would want to play something that didn't make them out to be an unhinged psychopath. Anyway, originally available on the PSP and Nintendo DS, then later on the iPhone, Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars took the Smash Criminal series back to its roots putting a classic top-down camera on the 3D title. Praised for its tight controls, the miniature slice of mayhem is a strong contender for the Portable Golden Joystick Award. That said, kids make up a huge portion of portable gamers, and unlike the next few nominees, Chinatown Wars isn't exactly child-friendly. Little Big Planet is up next, packing Sackboy exclusively into the PSP. The pint-sized puzzler came with 35 pre-created levels, the mandatory level creation mode, and of course, voiceover from Stephen Fry. Well, it wouldn't be Little Big Planet without him, really, would it? Little Big Planet really helped prove what the PSP was capable of, and with a steady stream of downloadable content since release, it's got a very healthy fan base behind it. Returning to the undead now, it's Plants vs Zombies. PopCap, kings of small but addictive games, released Plants vs Zombies for Mac, PC and iPhone, creating a cult sensation along the way. The premise is simple enough, zombies want into your home and the only way to stop them is with an arsenal of weaponized plants. It shouldn't make sense, yet somehow it does. Plants vs Zombies is the only title in this category without a fully fledged franchise already behind it, but despite that we reckon it's in with a pretty good chance of making off with the golden joystick. <laughs> Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver versions are up next. The two have been nominated after many years of outstanding service to pocket sized monsters. The Nintendo DS exclusives are actually enhanced remakes of the 1999 originals, proving over a decade later there's still demand for the portable role playing Poke Battler. Another Nintendo DS exclusive is up next it's Professor Layton and Pandora's Box. <sighs> <sighs> 
Following the sensational success of Professor Layton and the Curious Village, the professor and his plucky, i.e. annoying, apprentice Luke brought over 150 new puzzles to the DS as they tried to solve the riddle of a mysterious box said to kill anyone who dared open it. Spooky. And rounding off the list of portable Golden Joystick Award nominees, it's The Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks. Also nominated for the RPG category, it's a fully-fledged Zelda title exclusively for the Nintendo DS. In it, Link is trying to save Princess Zelda, go figure, and the Kingdom of Hyrule from the clutches of evil, all while riding around on a handsome steam train. A fun and exciting game, but does it have enough steam to make it all the way to the Golden Joystick Award itself? The answer lies in your hands. Those are the nominees for Portable Game of the Year, sponsored by Habbo.com. Now get yourself over to GoldenJoystick.com and vote for your palm size preference. We'll be back soon with more from the Golden Joystick Awards. We'll catch you then.